So let's go through a tutorial of integrating Login with Unstoppable. Uh, with Login with Unstoppable, we have quite a few integration methods. Uh, what I'm going to be using right now is just the bare bones framework. It's called Login with Popup. It's basically a call right to our JavaScript library itself. Uh, I'm going to map it just to a ba very basic bu uh, button. And then what we're going to do is show what how you can access the information, how you can integrate it in. So uh, as you can see here, I have a very basic uh, React app. All I've really done is added in a couple buttons. As you can see right now, these buttons do nothing. And what we're going to be doing is just hooking up our login and log out features into each of these buttons. Uh, I'm going to be following along for the most part in our documentation with this login with pop-up, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So first things first, uh, our login uses the UAuth.js library under the hood. So I'm going to go and I'm going to install that into my projects directory. That will only take a second. And now we're all set to begin. The next thing we want to do is start setting up a client. Uh, this client is what is going to uh, OpenID flow is going to connect to on the server side. So we need to know where our DAP is requesting information from. So what I'm going to do is go over to our developer dashboard. And I'll show you, it looks like this when you first log in. Uh, I'm going to connect my wallet and sign in. Of course, I could log in with Unstoppable here as well, but I'm just going to be using my MetaMask for the sake of simplicity right now. And what we're going to do is create a new client. So it's simple enough. We're going to create a client. I'm just going to call this Jim's demo for right now. And what this client is basically going to do is this is where we're going to be able to create a client ID, set our redirect URIs, and change our scopes around. So I'm just going to save my changes. Uh, important to note, this redirect URI, where you set it in here, it's very important that this redirect URI is a, an exact string match to the redirect URL that you're going back to upon successful login. Uh, I can touch more on it later, but basically, if you're using a different port or you're using a different host or whatever it might be, the, 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 there's going to be some issues with the redirection because it's looking for that specific string. So I'm going to be running this on localhost port 3000, so it's, uh, this will work for me. But if I was running it on a different port, I would add in localhost comma that port. Or if I was running this in production, I would add in the production server URL. But now that I have this and this is all ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my client config configuration, and this is what we're going to use in our file. So going back to our code again this is our uh, very basic boilerplate app and this is what that whole uh, react modal looks like right now uh, i just have a couple buttons very basic and again we're going to start populating these out so first thing we want to do of course is import our library so that's going to be import uauth capital a from UAuthJS, very good. And now what we need to do is create our UAuth instance. So we're gonna const UAuth equals new UAuth. And this is where that client configuration comes in. So that data that I just copied, I'm just pasting that right in there. And as you can see, this is it, just telling us that this is gonna be the client ID, this is the redirect URI, and these are the scopes we're gonna use. We'll come back more on that now. So that's all good. Now, quite simply, the next thing we need to do is just uh, set up login. For the sake of right now, what I'm gonna do is just uh, call our login function and print out the results to console just so you can see what it looks like. So when the button is clicked, it's gonna call this login button. And pretty much all it is is we call our UAuth object and we're just doing login with popup. And that'll handle the whole thing, pretty much that one line of code. Now, this is an async function, so just for printing it out, what I'm going to do is grab the authorization. And I'm going to just map this out into a function. And we're going to console.log authorization. Cool. So now let's see this in action. So I'm going to hit the login button. Now this is that modal again. This is what I was talking about. This is basically what the library is doing. 
uh, it detected one of the one of my domains in my wallet. This is the one I'm going to sign in with. So it's giving me information about what re uh, what scopes is requesting. Again, this is all handled within the library. Notice I didn't have to configure any of that in this app. So now I'm going to sign the transaction to sign in. And you can see the data. So now this is all accessible to the app. So uh, the subject here is my domain name. You can also see my wallet address. So all of that is now accessible by the DAP. And quite simply for logout, it, unsurprisingly, it's uauth.logout. Now you would normally be setting these all to state variables, handling them like that. So this logout button isn't gonna do anything right now other than call the library and revoke access, but basically uh, you'd be handling it in your app in that way. So let's just say we want to add one more scope. Uh, there's a long list of scopes that you can find in our documentation, but for right now, I'm going to say, let's just add a social scope and let's make it optional. So the name of the scope is social. I'm going to make it optional. I'm adding that again into my configuration down here uh, in the code itself. And that's about it. So now let's go back to the uh, app again. Now when I hit login, what you'll see is this new scope, view links to your social media sites, and again, it's optional. So as a user, I can choose that I don't want to share that information with this app. For right now, I will. And again, I'm going to sign the transaction to sign in. And now what you can see in the data returned, there's some of my social information. You can see uh, what my Telegram handle is, Twitter handle, Discord handle. So maybe if you need to connect with users through that way, you can. Uh, you can also see verification statuses. So this user has verified their Discord handle. So this is a, an authenticated Discord endpoint, whereas this Telegram handle, they did not verify. So it's just a t uh, just basically text that they entered. And it gives you that ability to get that level of data from your user.